Hello, wonderful people. How is everyone doing today? How are you doing today? Another Parenting Essential, another Saturday evening. Let's come together and learn again. It's time for us to learn together. I want to learn from you. And you also come and learn from Miss Oye. It's Parenting Essentials. And it's a Saturday evening and this is coming to you from the Vision Guide. Don't forget this is the home of key strategies to parenting. It's been wonderful weeks, I believe, because even me, it's been a time of learning over again and again. It's, another, it's one thing to be a parenting coach. It's another thing to be a parent yourself. You can teach what you're not doing. But if you want to teach, if you want to do what you're teaching, you have to also be intentional. So many a times I also sit down again after the program and listen over again. Now, not like... I will not watch it as I'm the, like I'm the one talking, but as a parent who also wants to learn from a coach. And it's been wonderful. It's been amazing. I believe the topics we've been doing back to back, it's been wonderful. I must say, I, I believe you agree with me if you do. All right. Last week, I talked about let's change the phrase. Let's change the phrase. I want to believe a lot of us have been able to change our phrases from negativity to lighten it up, to move it towards positivity. I believe that was impactful. I believe that was helpful for you. And today we are going to be talking about consequences. Consequences. How can we come up with good consequence or consequences? What are the ways we can use to come up with good consequences? So if you are there and you can hear me and you are joining me today, you can just say hello and let me know you are there. Hi. I'll be so grateful to see you say hi. I'll be so happy to see you say hello. And I'll get started soon. All right. So we'll be talking about consequences. Let me know if you can hear me audibly. If you can hear me audibly, then we are going to go ahead and uh, learn another wonderful thing today. In many of my videos, there's a common saying also that comes out every time that says, go through with your consequences go through with your consequences over the time with the questions i get from parents i've come to realize that we say go through with your consequences but a lot of parents do not know what is consequence or how to come up with a good consequence hence this wonderful topic so if you're a parent an intended parent this is a very good topic for you so you're in the right place so stay tuned if you don't know how to come up with your consequences with your children, if you're struggling on that, or you don't even understand what is go through with your consequences that Oye is always saying, it is time for you to have full understanding of what is consequences and how to come about with good consequences with our children. All right. Because when I say, or when we all say we are going to go through with our consequences, and we don't understand what is consequence, or what are consequences, or when to use them, or how to come about it, that means we are doing something very wrong. That means we are not doing something right. And you see, I get a lot of questions from parents that shows that, you know, this is not what I'm talking about. Their understanding about consequences is shallow. It's not even clear enough. So we're going to be digging deep on consequences today and how to come up with good consequences. All right, consequence is the art of instance of following something as an effect. The result or out outcome, consequence, is going to be a result or an outcome. I'm going to take it easy because I really want us to understand. So this might take us two weeks and that is totally fine. You're going through with your consequences for your children, but you don't understand what consequence is. You don't understand how you can come up with a good consequence. So this is the right place for you at this moment. What is consequence or what are consequences? 
consequence comes after uh, a re is as a result of something that you do or has been done. Is a report. It more of, let me say it's a report card. You've done something. You get the result. That is consequence. Getting a result. It will come after. It's an aftermath, an after effect of something, either good or bad. But many a times when we use the word go through with your consequences, we attach it to the negative, like a negative consequence. I'm going to be explaining that later. It might be a good consequence and it might be a bad consequence. It doesn't have to always be attached to something bad. And when we talk about bad consequence, it doesn't mean it's a bad act. So this is, these are things that we need to understand so that we don't, uh, so that we are not guilty on our children in the name of our positive parenting. Our intentionality needs more understanding. We need to develop ourselves the more. We need to enlighten ourselves the more so that we push and get good results. A consequence... Uh, Okay, I'll be using that some examples so that we understand what the consequence is. Somebody who is running like over speeding, you get uh, a ticket or charged for over speeding, crossing red lights. The consequence is going to be what? Pump, 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 your phone message, 6,000 or whatever it is. How many dollars, wherever you are, how many naira, wherever you are. So that is the consequence. I over <laughs> last week I got a message. What a perfect time to share this. I got a message like I over speeding. It's a consequence for me. I need to pay. You understand? So I had to face that consequence of over speeding and pay the money to the government. So that is consequence. So it might be either good or bad. And that is why I'm very I'm very careful. I want to take it easy because I don't want people to keep asking the same question. I want people to understand so that we can raise our children right. So that we can raise our children right. A consequence is any change, either good or bad, in an environment following a behavior that is that makes uh, that you a behavior that you want to see more or you want to see less of it. You can use consequence when you want to see more of a particular behavior. Or you want to see less of that particular behavior. That is why I said it's not about being negative only. We don't use consequence when you want to punish, punish, punish. That is not what we call consequence. If you want to see more of a good behavior from your child, you go through with consequences. If you want to see less of that bad behavior, you also go through with consequences. But we need to have clear understanding of what consequence is. So, consequence can be both positive or negative. Let's talk about positive consequence. Positive con uh, consequence. That means you want to do something for a child to keep up the good work. I, I made a video before about reinforcing, you know, reinforcement, reinforcement. We talk about positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement. There are so much similarities between these two. Positive consequences, negative consequences, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. It's about taking away or adding to. I will explain. Taking something away or adding something. So the word negative is not because it's bad. We sometimes need to use positive and negative depending on the situation. It depends on the situation before we know what kind of consequence we need to use. Is it negative? Is it positive? Depend the situation will determine the kind of consequence we are going to use. You can't just say you want to use punishment in the name of negative consequence every time and you never catch your child with good behavior. Only negative, negative, negative. I will explain that in a short while. We have the natural and the logical consequence. 
I mentioned positive and negative, and I'll be explaining that later. But I want us to know that we have natural consequence. We have the logical consequence. What are natural consequences? They will happen anyways. These are consequences that we cannot stop. It will happen anyways. For example, you're telling a child, you're running too fast, and you might bump, you might fall, and the child refuses to listen. What is going to happen after that? The child is going to fall anyways. And that is a consequence. That is a natural consequence. And when we find ourselves in this situation, when the child is facing a natural consequence, we are not supposed to interfere or interrupt. But this particular thing is most of the time too expensive for us as parents to bear. We can't stand it. It's too expensive. But to get a good result, when we're talking about natural consequence, it is always good to step back. But many of us as parents, I can relate. We can't stand that. We can't step back. A child is running on the stairs. A child is doing something. I say, you're going to get out. No, 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 worry. I'm going to. And the child is not being careful. And that happened. That those are natural consequences. At that time, you're just going to keep mute and just let the child face it. The child is going to learn anyways. That is natural consequence. It's not from you even though you have corrected the child. So that is going to happen. We can't stop it. It is natural. We can't stop it. So I hope that is clear enough. Natural consequence. When we talk about logical, of course you know the reverse. It's what comes from us. Natural consequences also affect in, in, even in the academics. When you tell a child, do your own work, do this, prepare for your spelling test, and, and the child is not, not, remote, not, not, not ready to listen to that, not ready to do the own work, what is the result? It's going to affect the grade. That is natural consequence. But it, I said earlier that it can be so expensive for us as parents because we wouldn't be able to stand that if the child is not ready to go for home or do the homework, do the spelling test, prepare for quiz. We can't stand it. It's too expensive. So many a times we are going to be guilty because we cannot pay the penalty to see our children grow through these natural consequences. So we talk about uh, consequences are in stages. We have the stage one, stage two. I'm going to stop on stage one, stage two for this benefit of parenting essentials. There are more stages to consequences. But for stage one, it's mostly for children of younger age. Let's say early years children. But stage two, it's for older kids. They don't need cooperation. It doesn't require cooperation. But stage one, when you want to use... Stage one consequence, it requires cooperation because they are still little. You need to be on the same page, they need to follow through the instruction. But there are consequences for older kids, you don't need their cooperation. You'll be able to carry it through anyways. I will break it down and I will try to explain as much as I can so that we understand and use it appropriately. As I go on, if you are confused or you are in doubt, please just go ahead and let me know. I will try and address it. If you have any question or concern, go ahead as usual and let me know. And I'll try as much as I can to answer your question. I am taking it so easy today and I really want to take it very easy and slow. So that we all have full understanding of what we are doing. Every time we are going through our consequences, but what exactly are we doing? What exactly are we doing as parents when we talk about consequences of our children? All right, I will be talking about some specific examples of consequences so that we can understand. I will give some examples so that we can use them. Consequences are all about creativity as parents. We need to be creative. However, I will give some few examples that you can use some of these and think about what you can come up with because you are the one who knows your child best. We always talk about the unique child. Your child is different. My, ch my children are different. You are the parent that understands the unique child. So every child will not have or face the same consequence because of their uniqueness. The consequence will not be the same. 
you are the parent, understand the unique child, know how to get that child best. All right, specific examples of consequence. I've talked about one to the one we use to decrease a particular behavior. One way is for you to introduce something that they don't want. You as a parent, you are introducing something to the child that the child doesn't want. Another thing is taking away something from that child that the child is attached or in love with. Please be careful and understand carefully. I am not saying don't give your child dinner. That is a no, no, no. When you don't give your child balanced diet and say you're not going to, you're just going to have bread, all the bun, bun, bun. There is no salad for you. There is no this for you. That is a no, no, no. This is not the time to use that kind of negative consequence. It's a no. We are not talking about what is going to nourish their body. And that is why I want to give some specific example. Because I've seen parents say, ah, you're going to miss your dinner. Because of this, it's a no. You don't do that. There are things that are not permitted, that we are not permitted to use as consequence on our children. Either good or bad. We should not forget our duty is to love our children, love and love again. There are rules. You can't say, I'm the mother anyway, I'm the father anyway, so I can do what I like. You can't do what you like. You can only do what is right. There's a huge difference between what you like and what is right. And to be an intentional parent, you can only do what is right, not what you like. Not what you like. So when you're taking something away or adding something, it must be reasonable. And bear in mind, either taking something away or adding something is to improve, improve a particular behavior. Maybe you want to see more of a, a, a good behavior or you want to see less of a bad behavior. There must be a reason you are taking away. There must be a reason why you are adding. Is it that you want to see more of a good behavior or you want to see less of a bad behavior? Let's talk about, let's talk about uh, stage one for the younger children. Early years and children before the teenage age. Or let's say early years, up to six years. You can introduce something like card. Let's, let's borrow from the footballers. Maybe you're using red card. If the child is getting two red card, after uh, two yellow card rather, you can say, I'm going to give you two yellow card. And after that is the red card. Once the child gets red card, maybe the child is going to be on timeout or lose the screen time. First yellow card is with warning. Don't do it again. You have one yellow card. Second yellow card, be reminded that's your last chance. After two yellow cards, then you give a red card. But these things, you have to respect them so that the children will take it serious. And that is why later today or next week, I'll be talking about when a child doesn't care about consequence. Why? Why? What caused that? Because I've seen parents telling me, uh, my child doesn't care about consequences anyways. I don't want to start talking about that now. I will talk about later today or next week. About why your child do not care about consequences. Alright. So you can use the card method. It's very good. Yes. Uh, you, can, you can even say uh, chips. Call them. Just come up with something. You're going to get red chips. Two red chips or three red chips. Time out. Or thinking corner. When my children were, were much younger, I didn't use uh, time out. I didn't use the word time out for them. I used the word thinking corner. It is time for you to go to the thinking corner, think about your behavior, think about is that good and should we, do we need to do that? They take a moment, but bear in mind, don't keep a, a girl or a child of three years in the thinking corner for 10, years, 10 minutes, no. If a child is three years, the child is only permitted to be in that thinking corner or time out for three minutes. If a child is five years, the child is only permitted to be in that thinking corner or time out for five minutes. We should understand it clearly and don't misuse it. Use these things appropriately. 
I cite everyone that is joining me. Thank you for joining me. Hello, Ripti Money on Instagram. I cite you there. This is so cow. Thank you for joining me on Instagram. Miss Remy, I cite you there on Facebook. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Mrs. Florence, thank you for joining me, madam. Uh, Veronica, thank you for joining me. I cite you there. Madam Pasca, thank you for joining me. God bless you. I appreciate you joining. God bless you. If you're just joining today, I'm talking about consequences, how to come up with a good consequence, or how to come up with good consequences, and um, how we can come up and how understanding, full understanding of what the word consequence is. And I'll be I'm giving examples of what we can use. I talk about stage, stage one and stage two of consequence. I said stage one is used for early years, younger children, because you need cooperation from them. Stage two is for older children. You, it doesn't require cooperation because you have access. You can take your access, the access they have from you because they are grown. I'll be giving more examples to that later. No cooperation is required because they, they are grown, they understand. You've already mentioned the consequence to you. They understand what will happen if they misbehave. All right, so I've given an example for younger kids. I, talk about, uh, I talked about red cards, yellow card, or you can say red chips. You can come up with something. It's a form of consequence. Example for a teenager, for example, if your teenager goes out and said, come back by 6 p.m., for example, or come back by 5 p.m., but the child is coming home by 9 p.m. or 7 p.m., what are you going to do after you have set the rule? Okay, last week we talked about rephrasing our words. So we are going to use some of the words we learned last week, rephrasing our words, in this process of going through with our consequences. So how can you handle that with your teenager? And there's another party coming on for the friend. Just say, you will go, you'll be able to go to your friend's party the next time when you, maybe you are thinking of, you want the, your child to write an essay on why we need to follow an instruction or why we need to obey our parents. That is a, that is a consequence. You'll be able to go to your friend's party the next time when you are able to write me four pages on why we have to follow through our parents instructions automatically you know you are saying you cannot go to any party until you do this but we are reducing the power of negativity in rephrasing the word but the, because the child is grown you get the point oh mommy is upset now or mommy doesn't like what i did not being upset anyways i need to do this the process of writing will take, will tell the child, this is what I've done is wrong. I must not do it again. You are adding something. You are adding something because the child needs to write. That is in the class of positive consequence. But when you're taking something out like, that the child has done something and the child is going to you lose the iPad time, add, uh, the screen time. Taking something out, it's a negative consequence. The word negative consequence does not mean it's bad. No. When we take out, because of the word negative uh, reinforcement, negative consequence, a lot of parents, they, don't, they do not understand this. It's not bad. We have to use it. But it's when we take something out, to see a better result or a better behavior in our children. When we add something to see a better result, to improve a behavior or to decrease a negative behavior. I hope I'm clear. I hope this is, I'm, I'm kind of gentle and explaining gently this time because we have done reinforcement about two years ago and I've talked about uh, consequence in the past. But the, I can see that people are not getting the point so much. And we must understand what we are doing when we are using consequence in our children. If we do not understand it, it is better not to do it. And because we are intentional, we want to get better for our children. We want to understand better so that we can get a very good result. Don't forget that your children will grow in glory. Whatever you teach them today, they are, in, they are your package. Whatever we are doing today, we want to ensure what we are packaging is glorious. Just go ahead and ask questions. 
if you need to just go ahead and type your question and i will see how to answer that all right Negative consequence, I've already mentioned it, because you take something away. Something the child wants, not just taking something away, not something that the child do not care about. You take something that the child wants away. In psychology, it's also discipline, but don't be carried away with the word discipline. It is discipline. Negative consequence. But I don't want you to get worried about, no, we use... Uh, yeah, uh, it is punishment. It is punishment in psychology. But don't get worried about the punishment. It is still discipline. It's discipline. Because you want to instill the discipline in them. When we talk about uh, negative compliments, neg uh, negative consequence, there are ways that we can make it fun for the early years, for the younger children. I've seen parents telling me, oh, my child doesn't sit in church. My son doesn't do this, or when you go to a gathering or a function, how can I, I cannot get my three years to sit down, I cannot get my four years to sit down without jumping around, without following through, you know. Normally, a, a child who is energetic, they want to stand up, they are easily bored. However, it's our duty to teach them that it's time to sit. For example, if it's a church gathering, or it's a meeting or something, that they need to teach. It is not a problem that your child is not ready to sit. That is a typical child. But don't forget your duty as parent is to teach that skill. Your job is to teach that skill. All right, let's use an example. Now you want to use consequence, a negative consequence to encourage your child to be able to sit when you go out for a function, to be able to go sit when you go to church. For example, you're going to church now. You can get a Ziploc and put like 10 candies inside and tell the child, let's talk about like three years to six years. These candies are yours. You can keep them safe with you as we go. But you need to be seated on your bum or through the service. Except we are asked to stand up. You need to sit, if there is a boy or there is a back pocket, Tell the child you need to use your back pocket and sit down on it every time. Every time you stand up, when we are not asked to stand up, you are going to lose one of your candy. Bear in mind, children love candy, right? They love, the children love candy. This is the thing that your child loves. They don't want to let it go. We are talking about negative consequence, taking something away. That's what I'm explaining. Every time you stand up, without... Every time you stand up without being asked to stand up, you are going to lose one candy. So bear in mind it's 10. So, but make sure you follow through. Following through is where the child stands up without being told, you pick one candy, you keep it. Even if you don't mind, throw it in your mouth and let the child say, mm, the candy is gone. Make a right decision so that you keep the rest of your candy. You are encouraging the child to learn how to sit, it's more like a reinforcement. Don't forget I made a video sometimes back and I said, these things are going to be, you will feed them away as a child is getting the point. But for now, I'm explaining what uh, negative consequences are. You take it out. Do we understand that? Are we together? Negative consequence. Taking the candy if the child is standing up without being told or not ready to sit down on the back pocket. For older children, for example, if uh, for older children, I'm going to be doing negative and positive together because I'll use an example that will fit in. For example, if you have been the type that you've been encouraging your children, if you clean the house, if you clean the house, I give you, I'll give you this particular amount. One dollar, two dollar, five reals, ten naira, fifty naira, whatever currency you're using. Giving the child that reward as money, it's a positive consequence. Now the child is going to have money. So how can we turn that to negative consequence? Anytime I see the environment dirty, you didn't clean, you are going to lose one out of your money. 
For example, you have been giving to two reals when I see everywhere is cleaned. So now you can also pay me. The child is going to pay. You have to go and get your money and pay. Two reals, $10, $10 for not cleaning her. That becomes a negative consequence. The child is not going to be ready to lose the money. The child is not going to be ready to pay you for not cleaning up. So these two goes together, the negative and positive, I just want to use to save time to give one example. Whatever you are using as a negative compliment must be what the child loves, not something that doesn't matter. It must matter. It must be something important to the child, something the child is not ready to let go. Sometimes the child will feel the pain, but not skipping dinner, not saying I will not give you breakfast, not using meal or something that is directly important to the child. So taking away negative compliments, adding positive compliments. When we are doing these things, it's very important also to be careful of our phrases. Just what we said last week. We have, we, I dealt a lot with how we can rephrase the word. So even during uh, consequences, it's very important for us to be careful of the placement of words. We will leave to the game. Maybe the child is going for a game or a party. We will leave for your game. We will leave for the game as soon as you clean your room. Not you are not going for the game because your room is dirty. Do you know technically it's the same statement? But we will leave for the game as soon as your room is clean. Takes out the negativity and make it light. It takes out the negativity. But you are not going for the game. Your room is dirty. It's still, so much negativity is involved. And when we are dealing with teenagers, I have already explained that last week. The children of this generation, they don't like that. They don't like to feel bossy. So it takes our wisdom, prayers, to ensure that our own growing glory will be in the right path and ensure our faces are in the right place. Ensure your words are in the right place. All right, why uh, some, ch why are some children, why, okay, some children, they do not care about consequence. I've heard that before. My child doesn't care about consequence. Even when I talk, he say, okay, uh, it doesn't matter, whatever. I don't know, maybe you have seen children like that before. I've seen many of them like that. You are going to lose this thing. Whatever. I don't care. Kaliwali. <laughs> you see the Arabs saying Kaliwali. So I've seen many of this before. Why? Why are such things happening? Why? Why do you think some children do not care about consequences? Why? So I'll be talking about why now. <clears throat> when they say, uh, whatever, I don't care, do as you like, mm -mm, it's okay, and they just roll their eyes and just walk away. I don't believe there are children who do not care about consequence, but they are trying hard to make you go off track. I said it over and again, Ch these children of this generation, they are too smart. They are going to press your button. The child is just trying to press your button, just making you to be off course, off guard. The child doesn't want to, you know, I don't care. Don't buy it. Try not to buy it. It is very important for you not to buy in. You just cut their bluff. If a child is telling you that, okay, uh, you didn't clean your room today, and that means you're going to lose your screen time tomorrow. That means you're going to lose your, uh, your play time. And the child is telling you, okay, mommy, I don't care. It's not a time for you to shout or scream. Just, oh, nice. I'm glad you're okay by it. But make sure you go through. Because the child is just pushing it to see if that word is going to make you change your mind. So tell the child, I am very happy you're okay with that. And go through with your consequence. The child is aware that you are very weak as parent. The child, they, he, he or she is very aware that he, he or she is smarter than you. So now tell the child, I am I'm grown now. I know better now. And make sure you follow through with your consequence. 
What are other reasons why children behave as if they do not care about consequence? Pastor John, I cite you there, sir. Thank you for joining me, Pastor John. God bless you. God bless you. I'm glad to see you, sir. God bless you. What are the other reasons why they feel they behave as if they don't, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, whatever, whatever, mommy, whatever. And you will, uh, I've dealt with some children in the past, and the way they would talk to me, they really want to get at me. In fact, I was working with a child today, and they're telling me, you're ugly, look at your head. He, he put, just pick a paper and was just drawing my head. I said, oh, I'm glad to hear that. As long as you finish what I asked you to do, good for me, good news. The child was trying to get at me. Who cares? You have to be smart than these children. You have to be smart. As long as you go through with your consequence, the child is following. Forget about what the child is saying because the child is just trying to get you off guard. All right. Another reason why they behave like that is because they feel discouraged. They feel discouraged. Time is gone. They feel discouraged or helpless. When a child is having a feeling of discouragement and helpless, they behave, they show you that they, they do not care about whatever you're saying. Because you've proved to them over and again as parents that whatever, nothing they do matters. Whatever they do, see, this is time for parents to stop and check. You have to check your parenting styles. Is it always about mommy or always about following through the consequence? If your child is feeling of uh, having the feeling of discouragement or helpless, it's because of something you have been doing as parent. And it's time to check. Time for you to check. Time for you to check. You have to look in depth into your parenting styles. Make sure it's not about you. Make sure you are following through consequences. You have to check. You have to check. The moment they are feeling like they don't care, it means they might have been getting only consequence for bad behavior. Have you been crediting them for good deeds? Because some parents, you know, we are so much full of ourselves. It's all about me, about me. When a child is doing something good over and again, you did not even mention. There is no, uh, that we are not giving any good consequence. You are not giving any praises. But once the child is doing one mistake, you are there to shout. You are there to do something that to do negative reinforcement, to take something away. Children like that, they get distressed, they get discouraged. It doesn't even matter. When I do something good, she didn't see me. He didn't see me. So what else? Let me just do something bad and let's just face it together. So these are our thoughts as parents and we have to be careful. We have to be careful. They need to get praises. They need to get credit for good deeds. Give, catch them on good behavior. Rain praises, well done. Fantastic. I'm taking you out because you did well in cleaning up the house. You followed through the instruction. I'm taking you for a lunch tomorrow. Not just, it's tomorrow, tomorrow, now you are making, you are missing your screen time. Tomorrow you are doing that. Tomorrow you are not going to play time. You never see anything good. Parent, let's stop that and catch them with something good so that they will care about the consequence. Now I'm explaining why some children do not care about consequences. It's time to check. Thank you, Pastor Yinka, sir. Thank you for joining me, sir. God bless you. I cite you there, sir. God bless you. I appreciate you. It is time to check. I'm so blessed today. I have two pastors here. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. I really appreciate it. It is time to check. You can't just be saying you're bad, you're doing this. You never see something good on your child. I've said over and again, forget about those things that your child cannot do. Don't compare. Focus on your child's strength. Take advantage, advantage of it. Meet the child and project into the next phase. Do we have any question? Because time is fast spent, I would like to stop right now. If it, all you do as parent is penalty uh, uh, on bad behavior, all you do is catching them on bad behaviors, giving penalty, uh, using, you want to just let them face their bad behavior without the good side of them, it is not acceptable. Check yourself. 
think about your parenting styles and fix it so that we don't regret in our intentional parenting. Don't forget these children are our growing glory, our future. Our training them is a package. Whatever we impart on them is a package and we are accountable to what we have in our package. So my question to you at this moment is, what do you have in your package? Do you have rotten goods in your package or fantastic goods? I said this word is big at the same time it's too small. Who knows? Where are we going to meet? If I become your in-law tomorrow, are you giving me a very great package? Oh yeah, what package are you packing for somebody's child in the future? Ensure your package is important. Ensure your package is quality, excellent. Don't pack rotten goods. Any question? Any question? When they say, I don't believe you, I don't believe you, I am going to, when you do this, this is what is going to happen, and your child is telling you, I don't believe you, come on, don't say that again, I don't believe you. You need to stop and check, stop and check. You have not been consistent in your words. Is your word gold or garbage? As parents, don't forget, we are their friends, and yet an authority. And it is very important for our word to be gold always. Not only one day, but consistency is key. Your word must be gold every time. Not just trash. Not just garbage. Because of the way you feel today, you feel your child can break the rule. This is our fault. What is happening to the children is many, many, many parents' fault. Your child can break the rule today because you feel tired. Because you feel it's okay only one day. It's not allowed. Your word will be trashed. Your word will be garbage. Carry your word powerfully. They are goals. Be your child's best friend. Yes, can as an authority. And I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. I want to believe there is no question because I've been asking if there's any question. Thank you for joining me on Instagram. OJ1 Gosson, Damola. Thank you for joining me. Modupiola, thank you for joining me. In Kestonic, thank you for joining me. Obemba So. Thank you for joining me. Only Ricky Money, I cite you there. Thank you for joining me on Instagram. God bless you. God bless you. All right, if you have any questions, please let us ask. Today, I've been able to cite examples on consequences because of the questions I've been getting, which made me understand that many of us are using consequences, but we don't understand what is consequence. How can we come up with good consequences? And what are the consequences that we can use? And... I came up with this topic and I believe I don't even want to go ahead with this topic next week. I'm just going to go ahead with a new topic next week. If you have any question, I'm going to be out of here in one minute. Just go ahead and ask. Don't forget the natural and the logical consequence. Natural consequence will happen anyways. You cannot stop it. You can't stop it. Stop running. You're going to get out. No, no, no. And the child is, maybe the child fell and get, uh, got out. That is a natural consequence. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. Do your assignment, do your homework, study your work, prepare for your exam. If a child refuses, what is going to happen? The child is going to have bad results. That, those are natural consequences. You can't help it, you can't stop it. But it's very expensive for most of us as parents. But it is very important for us to learn to stay away for the child to learn. When we say you, learn for your, you will learn from your mistakes, that's a natural consequences. Natural consequences. Let it go. It's not logical. And I talked about stage one and stage two of consequences. Stage one are for the younger children. Stage two are for the elderly ones, young adults. You don't need their cooperation. You just go through with your consequences. Don't forget I said, you can't say, you cannot go to that party. Because they can actually go to that party. And some children, you know, I don't know, this generation we had, we cannot just go to pray on our children. You can't say you cannot go to the party, but you can give the child a room to think and take good decision for his or herself. Take good decision. And you back it up with some strong consequence. If you do this, this is what is going to happen. And look away. And see, don't always be the talking, talking parent. You are always on guard. No, don't do that. No. Keep, let's learn to be quiet sometimes and watch. See, see. See what is going to happen. All right, thank you everybody once again for joining me today. I believe you've been able to learn something and I've been able to remind myself of why we have good consequences and how we can go about good consequences. Don't forget this is Parenting Essential and it's coming to you 
from the vision guide my name is oye oye liar oye for short and i am your parenting coach don't forget that your children are your growing glory 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 growing glory whatsoever you teach them today is going to be in their package they are plain slates they came blank when you were born were you born with anything nothing we were all born naked born blank blank slate just like blank state that they have to get a chalk and write our duty now is to take a pen and write on that blank slate what we want to see that's our duty as parents my child is not listening my child is not doing this your job is to teach the child how to listen not just shouting or ranting there are skills and there are ways to teach these skills whatsoever your child is not doing now and you're not pleased with it it's because your child has not learned the heart is a skill that you have to teach so the process of teaching the child is the process of you writing something on the slate you have to be a good child i want you to be a good and this is how to be a good child when you do this that is the process of you teaching the child the skill i hope i've been able to say something today thank you for joining me today brother thank you so much for joining me i appreciate you coming thank you everyone and i'm going to see you again this time saturday next week saturday the same time and it's going to be another wonderful topic because i believe this is good enough for today and i believe we're clear so in case you have any personal question that you don't want to put in the chat section you can send us uh you can dm us on facebook on instagram or you can send us uh, a message on our email and we are going to be ready to uh help out and uh come out together with how we can get solution or you're having a particular challenge on your child maybe there's a, some, something particularly that you really want to discuss with me just go ahead and send us dm i'm going to give you an appointment and we're going to talk about it if possible pray together if you're a christian and everything is going to work out good for you and your family don't forget your children your growing glory whatever you have in your package Whatever you teach them, whatever they get is what they have in their package. And I believe you are raising and packaging a good treasure for the future. Thank you once again, Pastor John. Thank you, Pastor again, Pastor Yinka, for joining me. Everyone that is here on Instagram, on Facebook, thank you so much for always coming when this little girl comes. Thank you and God bless you. And I'll see you next week for another impactful parenting essential. For now, ensure that you go through with your consequences after having the full understanding of what consequences are it can be a negative consequence and it can be positive consequence it doesn't matter as long as we know what we are doing go through with it and i'll see you next week bye for now god bless you